Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. I'm Susan Jane, the Intuitist, and I'll be your host for this Back to Basics series. This is episode 1.6, where we will go deeper into what it means to be an intuitive. Now, just to make sure... Everyone is on the same page. Let me explain briefly what intuition is, which we have discussed in previous episodes. Intuition is communication from our spiritual being to our physical body in order to create action. It is how our spiritual being communicates with us because our spirit requires an action or a learning that can only be achieved whilst in a physical body. Now, we have talked about the types of intuition and how we can receive it physically, mentally, emotionally, and visually. And in our prior podcasts, we have focused on these a lot deeper. So listen back for those if you want to have a bit more understanding on it. In the last podcast, we addressed visual intuition and what that means for us. There was an example of it. Did you try for yourself? How did you go? It can be pleasantly surprising once you get further into connecting with your intuition. So this week, let's look at what it means to be intuitive. Now, this question comes up a lot when people are first discovering intuition and trying to get an understanding of where they sit with it. Some people can make intuition seem like this big out-of-world experience that is beyond reach for most of us regular people. but Being intuitive isn't being any special or any different to anyone else. I assure you, if I can hone my intuitive abilities, anyone can do it. It just takes an open mind, a bit of practice, and a lot of faith in your ability. After all, we are all naturally intuitive. It is part of human nature. It's our intuitive nature. Yes, I know you've heard that before. Intuition is often classed as a a psychic or mystical or even unnatural. It is often thought that being intuitive means you can read or predict the future. Others bunch it together with psychics, clairvoyants or travelling gypsies. But being intuitive is more about what we are experiencing in the here and now. Sure, it can certainly help you futuristically. However, the focus for trusting your intuition is really about awareness of the here and now. Funny enough, when you are in business, intuition is often referred to as a gut instinct. Men are not as comfortable using the term intuition as women are. So to have a gut feeling or gut instinct about a business dealing or something to do with business, you are naturally experiencing that information or intuitive message in the here and now. It's not about the distant future, even if it has something to do with the future. Say, for example, should the business purchase a product to create more money? The future of the business could be riding on that decision, but this decision still has to be made in the here and now. The feeling or gut instinct is coming through loud and clear in the here and now and can help you gain a positive outcome sometime in the future. Let's face it, your future starts here and now. So the intuitive action must be about now to get you to where you want to be. This is why it's so important to become more aware, not only of your surroundings, but of your internal feelings and intuitive messages. Intuition can be broken down into in and tuition. So tuition, meaning teaching or guiding, and in, coming from within. So it means internal teachings or internal guidance. Therefore, to create a positive future, following your internal guidance is the ultimate path to take. 
being an intuitive means that you are naturally following your internal guidance and trusting its direction. But this can be easier said than done. Just recently, my partner was heading away for a few weeks and he wanted to take his motorbike out for a quick ride. It hadn't been ridden for a while and he wanted to give it a quick run just to clear away the cobwebs, both on the bike and within his head. He loved the feel of the road under the bike and at times spent and the time spent alone with just his thoughts. I would class it as an active form of meditation, but maybe not as relaxing or safe as walking around the block or park. Nonetheless, it was his way of enjoying an active but quiet moment to himself. The thrill of leaning the bike around the corners where you become one with the machine was one of his comments. The winding country road, the scenic views, the brisk cold mornings had him basking in his element. He loved the opportunity to ride, but things had been rather hectic up until the day before he flew out. He was gone a bit longer than I expected, but I wasn't one to panic or worry, so I kept myself busy. Eventually, he got back, and my first response to him was, you were a bit longer than I thought. There was a problem. he had had a minor accident, and I had to help him off his bike. The first thing he said was, I knew I shouldn't have gone out today. He was okay, but questioning himself over what he had done. From the very beginning, when he thought about going for a ride, he got this feeling that he shouldn't. He said he basically argued with his thoughts in his head, and this was the result. Not a bad accident, but an unnecessary injury before flying out. He told me it went something like this. Physical thought. Mmm, I wouldn't mind going for a ride. Intuitive feeling. No, something's not right. It doesn't feel right. Justifying the feeling. Is time on your side? Physical thought. If I get my bags packed early and I do a few chores, I would have time to fit it in. Intuitive feeling. No, something's not right. It doesn't feel right. Justifying the feeling. Is it the weather? Physical thought. It's a great day for a bike ride and there's no signs of rain anywhere. It'd be okay. Intuitive feeling. No, something's not right. It doesn't feel right. Justifying the feeling. What about spending time with family before going? Physical thought. I won't be gone long and the family know I need my space. Intuitive feeling. No, something doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. And it went on like this for quite some time, he said. Every time he would argue that it was okay to go for a ride, the same feeling came across him that he shouldn't go. But the hardest thing was that he had no excuse not to go. It was just a feeling, he said, and a feeling that he couldn't justify. It wasn't because of the weather or having enough time or not being with the family. The feeling had no justification, so it was easy to brush it off than it was to act on it. Have you ever had that? Had a feeling or thought, you know, it's right? but you just can't justify it? You can't prove it or give it cause as to why you feel it? That's your intuitive messages coming through. The more you try to justify it instead of feeling it, the less likely you are to follow it. So why didn't my partner follow his feelings? Why did he still go out for the bike ride? He didn't want fear to step in and stop him. He started to think, that it was fear speaking, not his intuition. So he ignored it and went for a ride. What was he fearful of, you ask? (laughs) Well, I did anyway. I guess he didn't want to fall off or hurt himself. But of course, that's exactly what he got. Lucky enough, the fear in him was small and the results were small. But intuition doesn't work on fear to manipulate you to do something. The feelings he was experiencing were not fear. He put them into that category. He tried to justify the feelings as fear talking 
and ignored his intuitive messages. One way you can look deeper into this is to ask yourself what you are feeling and sit with it, allowing it to come to its full exposure. There are times when I wake up in the morning and I feel a little down or not quite myself. I used to brush off those feelings and try to ignore them for a day only to find myself getting like bogged down with something. It created anger within me and I would get upset over something that was so trivial it was ridiculous. It was like I was holding everything down only to have someone press a button and the pressure get released. You know those times when someone asks you what's wrong and you can't quite express what the problem is because there doesn't really seem to be a problem. It is everything but nothing at the same time. A pot of emotional stew that eventually comes out and not always in the most pleasant of ways. I liken it to a a volcano where the emotions can sit almost dormant on the surface but constantly brewing underneath, only to have it triggered by a simple remark or action and then the full explosion occurs. If we can let the steam out of that constructively, then the pressure won't build. Better still, don't hold on to the feelings at that sort of level. When I was experiencing this at first, I would say it was hormones running around inside and maybe they helped stir things up. But it wasn't until I started respecting the feelings I was experiencing that things began to change. If I woke up feeling a little off, I would give myself a bit of time in bed to let those feelings be released. Holding them down is very destructive, not only for you physically, mentally and spiritually, but also those around you. Nowadays, I look forward to finding out what the feelings really are, whereas before I would lump them all together saying I was grumpy or upset or hormonal or emotional or whatever. Now, I run through a few of the feelings to see what it really is. And you know, the harder I look or try, the more it goes away. If I do discover the feelings, I sit with it and it soon just dissolves. I'm accepting that it could be from me, these feelings, these emotions, or it could have, I could have picked up somebody else's emotions or even the expressions of another spirit close by. Either way, I don't hold on to them anymore. Well, at least I don't hold on to as many as I used to. (laughs) The thing to remember here is not to look for the reason you are feeling this way. It is not about finding a reason and fixing the problem. It is all about really finding out what you are feeling and sitting with the feeling. Again, it's not what is causing the feeling. It is only the feeling you are focused on. This is really important. If you can sit with the feeling and not the perceived cause or the why, then you will notice the feeling beginning to dissolve. When we focus on the why, it increases the feeling or keeps it going. Feelings or or emotions are referred to as energy in motion. Emotions equal energy in motion. Sitting within the energy of that motion, it settles it down. But stirring it up by focusing on the cause of it or the why it happened, you will create more energy or emotions around it. If my partner had spent a bit of time listening, And feeling those intuitive messages, he would have found out it wasn't fear stopping him or arguing with him. He was doing that himself and creating more issues. If he really felt what his intuition was relaying to him, he could have made a decision without fear. Even to make that decision to go without fear may not have resulted in the small accident. This is why intuition is all about the here and now. 
When we experience feelings like that, we need to sit with them when they occur in order to not hold on to them. This also clears the path for clearer, intuitive messages that are not mixed up with those long-held emotions tainting the information. Now, here's a trick I used to do um, to help me release my emotions. When I was working my way through my emotionally abusive marriage, I got to the stage where I, I couldn't understand why I was feeling so helpless and so worthless. I had so many emotions squashed down on top of each other that I really struggled to keep my head above the emotional drowning I felt I was experiencing. I didn't have depression, but I often felt depressed. And I didn't have anxiety, but there were times when I felt really anxious. I wasn't sure what to feel or to think about, so I looked for help and found it in the movies. So this is what I did. When I felt the emotional pressure building up, I would hire a video. Uh, Yes, (laughs) it was videos in those days. And I would give myself time to watch it after the kids had gone to bed. Of course, it would be the saddest movie or love story I could find. And I would cry my eyes out until there was nothing left. Watching a sooky movie every now and again was the catalyst for letting go of my emotional pressure that was building up in me. It gave me the ability to address my problems without the full pressure of those other emotions behind it. This energy release usually coincided with my period, so yes, hormones do have a role to play, but they are not nearly as bad once you've mastered the art of letting the emotional pressure go. What I noticed more than anything else was that I was not nearly as emotionally unsteady when my period was due, unless, of course, I hadn't had the chance to express some of that pent-up negativity. (laughs) Again, it is being aware of how you are feeling in the here and now and knowing that your body is telling you And your intuition is guiding you towards a better future. Becoming intuitive is not some magical experience where you run off with the fairies and the world becomes this wonderful place. Being intuitive means being aware of how you are feeling internally and noticing what is happening externally of you. It means going within to ask the questions you are looking for answers for and giving yourself the time to really feel the feelings you are experiencing. Being intuitive is not having to justify why you are feeling the way you do, and allowing those feelings to surface and dissolve. Awareness is the key to being intuitive, both externally and internally. And you can only do that in the here and now. Being intuitive means following your inner teacher or inner guidance to help you take the next step towards your incredible future. So when you are aware of what's happening around and within you, you will understand what intuition can do for you, which leads us to our next week's episode. So next week, episode 1.7 is called, What Can Intuition Do For Me? Now, I've thought long and hard over this question, mainly because I've created tools to help you connect with your intuition and develop it and trust it. But what is the real purpose for doing that? We know that intuition is the communication from our spiritual being to our physical body. But again, what good is that for you? What I have found with intuition that is that it always gives you the answer to the questions you're seeking and therefore it helps you make the best life decisions. Why are they the best life decisions? Because the decisions are always in line with your life purpose and we know that when you're happy or feeling joyful, you are on your life purpose. When you're, you are experiencing the negative emotions, It's because you are straying away from your life purpose. Our goal has been and will always be to live our life on purpose and therefore be happy, joyful and content. But for now, 
That brings us to the end of this episode. Tune in next week to hear about what intuition can do for you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and please connect me on any of the social media platforms. They are, there are notes and subscribe to the podcast if you don't want to miss out on the next episode. Now, if you want to learn how to do your own flower readings, which is part of developing your intuition, I have online courses now available on the website. So the website is intuitivenature.com.au. And remember, we are all naturally intuitive. It is part of human nature. It is our intuitive nature. I'm Susan Jane, The Intuitist, and I thank you for listening. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.